Yo, what is up boys and welcome back to another Scum video. If you guys didn't see already, the developers of Scum shown another hour of footage, which I'm going to be making a TLDR version of today in this video. And if you missed my last video on Scum, in which I did a similar thing, I'll leave an annotation of that in the top right. There was a lot of information revealed in that video. And also in today's video, we learned a lot more about the weapons and a bunch of other game mechanics, which we can, of course, play for ourselves on Scum's release on August 29th. In case you guys didn't know about Scum already, it's $20, released on August 29th, and it's an early access zombie survival game, although the developers call them puppets, not zombies, but they are essentially zombies. We are only a few days away from Scum's release, so this is more than likely going to be the last developer stream which we are going to do, but they are going to be giving content creators, streamers, and YouTubers early access to record content on the game, so expect to see myself doing a 25 stream in the next few days. Obviously, you can go follow me over on Twitch, link in the description, and a bunch of our content creators making content on it really, really soon, which is exciting. But anyway, let's get into the cool things which be shown off in the little developer stream from today. So first and foremost, the stream pretty much was centered around the dam point of interest and also the prison point of interest. These both look really, really cool. They're going to be places, obviously, to acquire end game loot, but they're also going to be one of the most dangerous places on the entire map since there is going to be AI robots patrolling that area which will kill you if we do see you as a threat. Again, it might sound kind of confusing, but there is lore behind all the things in Scum. We did show off some other features which we've talked about before, but it was nice to see from an actual gameplay. I think one of the biggest things that a lot of game developers forget to do when they're launching these early access games is, although they might make a lot of cool claims, they don't actually prove that they work, but they've shown the dampness mechanic. So if you uh, obviously are caught out in rain or you go inside a lake, your clothes will get wet. It will increase in their heaviness and you can dry out your clothes by just waiting a really long time or putting them beside a camera campfire to be quicker or if you just want to stand beside a campfire that will also dry it out but it will be a bit slower so it's cool that they are obviously showing a lot of attention to detail we did see a bunch of new weapons in today's video we've seen the 22 caliber rifle a police baton a pump shotgun it seems like the police station seems to be a really good place to pick up a quick weapon and ammo really easily along with that we did see the m1 garand the svd the m9 9mm pistol and two different variants the mp5 the ak-47 akm aks 74u the pump shotgun again and i'm assuming there's probably a few other weapons inside the game right now we did confirm that weapons do have different fire modes, obviously single, burst, and fully automatic, depending on what weapon you are using. And we did get to see also in the event game mode later on during the stream that there is already grenades, smokes, and what looks to be maybe a flash grenade in the game already as well, which is good. Again, to show that there is a bunch of content in the game, it's not a bare bones survival release, which is why I'm so excited for this game. This video is definitely one of the most action-packed ones. They killed a lot of puppets throughout the video and talked about that they can come in different sizes and shapes, I guess. The bigger zombies are gonna be taking a lot more damage. Uh, depending on you know how big or small they are, they could run faster, they could inflict more damage when they swing, they could have a faster swing, stuff like that. There's obviously going to be a lot more zombies in the points of interest and inside the towns, not too many wandering the wilderness, although there will be a decent amount of animals there. And also, they did confirm the whole idea of zombies being aggro to sounds. You can go prone, and stealth does seem to work to a certain degree against the zombies as well. Right now, zombies cannot get inside buildings, although obviously if a door's open, they will be able to, but this is something that will more than likely change in the future. Something which a lot of people asked about, although I did confirm in my last video as well, is buildings, you can't barricade them right now, but in the future you will be able to. This is gonna be their form of base building in the game. There's no real base building, like you will find in other survival games in this game. So instead, the base building will purely be barricading up houses and making them your own. How exactly this will work with people logging out and logging into your server inside your house, I don't really know, but I guess we'll see very, very soon on release day. We did confirm that it is possible to distract puppets by throwing items such as rocks, or I guess pretty much anything you can imagine in the world, you are able to throw most items from what we can see. And we also seen that you can melee with weapons. So if you've got a weapon, you can hit them with your buttstock. And I'm assuming pretty much every single weapon in the game does have some kind of melee function as well. So there's not gonna be any clunk clunkiness with that. In close quarter fights, you can, if you do, so desired to just melee someone by, I think it was right clicking with a weapon. I'm not entirely sure how exactly that one works or what the keybind is, but it doesn't matter. Also, it was cool to see that the weapon they were using, the 22 rifle, they do have correct reloading animation. So if you only shoot one bullet, you only put one bullet back into the chamber. I know I sound stupid, but it's nice to see that there is, again, an attention to detail. This is not the bare bones 
survival game release. They have thought about the mechanics which they have implemented. We also did get the confirmation for his two different types of campfires. Again, attention to detail, and there is a bunch of different things to craft in the game. Including that as well is also a storage box which you are able to place in the world. So in case you guys want to stash all of your goodies somewhere in the 12 by 12 kilometer map, by the way, which is pretty big, pretty much the same size as Shinaris, then you are able to do that. We also shown off the leaning, although we have seen it in the past, but it's good to see that you can indeed lean. That is not something which has been missed out. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can turn off depth of field, and yes, you can turn off motion blur. So if you don't like that shit, then you can turn it off. Something which we didn't see today, but I know a lot of people have asked me, is you can alt look while running, much like you can in Daisy and Armor. If you don't know how this mechanic works, essentially you're running down a street, you hold alt, and you can turn your mouse without turning your character. So you can look at different positions while running somewhere without actually, um, you know, adjusting the direction your character is running in, which is a neat little feature. We already know that there is about 10 plus animals in the game, it seems like. There's boars, bears, crabs, deers, and a bunch of other ones, and you are able to track these using different skills. But again, it's nice to see that there is um, other threats in the world other than zombies. Obviously, we've got the robots, we've got the zombies, and also zombies can have uh, bulletproof vests on them, which is cool. So you're going to have to target the head with that one or kick them down, I guess. They did talk a decent amount about ballistics in the game. So if you have a 9mm pistol or an MP5, which is also 9mm, and you're shooting at a guy with a vest, then that's not going to do too much damage. And it's also ricochet, much like in Daisy and Armor. So there is the possibility of a bullet ricocheting off something and hitting you maybe in the head. And that could hurt you quite a lot. They did confirm headshots hurt. Weather and humidity also is taken into account as well. I don't know exactly how that works but but it show a long time ago i think about two years ago things like wind humidity and all that kind of stuff i don't know how exactly that would impact your bullets but yeah that's what they said so i'm just telling you guys what they said today but it also show off a right click focus mode which is an interesting innovative mechanic which will allow you to hear and see better and focus on something ignoring the whole depth of field which we'll see probably in the background gameplay when they are on the dam and it will also have the uh bad effect, I guess, of taking up some stamina. Also, for higher awareness skill, it will turn down the ambient sounds and will increase sounds of importance to your survival, such as footsteps and any animals which might be near you in the world, which is, like I said before, a lot of animals. So that's going to be pretty useful a lot of the time if you do have a lot of skill in awareness in the game. They did touch a bit more on the fame point system, which again, you can see in the top right of your screen. Like I mentioned in the last video, we are gained through doing things in the world, such as killing players, killing zombies, and as a whole, just surviving. And those points can be redeemed for various different respawn options, such as respawning on your friend or respawning close to your friend. It will be used for other things in the future, such as perhaps being able to get a loot advantage. Maybe you get like an airdrop or something like that. But that is the bare bones of the fame system right now. Still, it's going to be really useful to be able to spawn on your friend, obviously. And it seems like if you want to gain a lot of fame really quickly, you can actually join an event on your inventory screen at the top. We mentioned these last time, but uh, just so you guys know, the different events you can do is Cargo Assault, Team Deathmatch, and Deathmatch. If you're really good at these, you will get a shit ton of fame points. I think the person who won the competition which they did a Cargo Assault gameplay, you'll see in the background, um, I think they got 230 fame points. So you need a bit of fame points to enter those, but once you've paid the entry fee, you can gain a lot if you do just kill a lot of people, do a lot of objectives, yada, 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 on that. In total right now, there is eight events in total, various different locations around the world for the different game modes and I think this is really really cool something I loved in Daisy personally I don't know if you guys have ever played them before but but Daisy modded servers such as 420 gaming they had a team deathmatch game mode where you spawned with a random weapon in a random place in let's say the northwest airfield and you just went around and shot people but unfortunately Bohemia did not let people do this if you streamed it or made a YouTube video on it they would DMCA your content in this game it's built in so if you just want to go around and kill some people practice with various different weapons or you just want to go and get some fame to obviously change your gameplay in the actual survival core game, then you can do that, which I'm really, really liking that that's, you know, just a little optional thing to do. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but it is something cool to do on the side if you are a bit bored. It's really easy to just jump in and jump out of these events. You just get teleported to them and teleport out to them. I don't know how exactly that's going to work with combat login, but they did mention a while ago that combat login was something they were wary of and they did have a login out timer. So I'm sure there's a similar mechanic in place for this. We did get to see someone be physically sick for the first time ever. Obviously you are able to pee, poo, be sick, and 
there's a bunch of other cool things going on at the metabolism tab on the top of the screen if you guys haven't seen it already. The game has very complicated systems for that. Perhaps too complicated, but uh, it's nice to have a still in game and actually have some kind of function and purpose in the game. But yeah, like I said, I think that should be the last stream before the release. Again, if you guys want to check out more content on it, I've already got a bunch of videos on Scum, but the developers have made a bunch throughout the years of development. But again, this is an early access game, $20, coming out on the 29th of August. I'm really, really excited for it, and I will be doing, again, a 21st stream whenever I can get my hands on it. There's no confirmed date, whether it's going to be the 28th, 27th, or maybe even the 26th, that content creators can start playing on it. But obviously, we do want to make sure that the game is in a stable place, as with as little bugs as possible, before we do let content creators get their hands on it. I am already in the Scum Access or Early Access Alpha kind of Discord thing, and I have seen they've been daily pushing some really, really big updates. So it does seem like the developers are definitely determined to make this one a real survival hit. And and I'd love to hear, as always, what you guys think about it in the comment section below. But again, it just seems like it's really doing, of all the developers now mentioned it, it's pretty obvious, trying to do everything that Daisy did, but better and more, basically. Some of the things aren't quite as good, but I'm sure we can agree a lot of things are significantly better, and we are innovating in a decent amount of ways as well, which is always good. A lot of people have asked me what I think about the game. I've said it already, but I'm really excited for it. I think the developers really couldn't do much more than you already are doing. They've shown a lot of good signs, no pre-order bullshit, no Kickstarter or anything like that. They've just got a good publisher in the form of Devolver Digital. And as a whole, they have said multiple times, you know, if you are listening to feedback and they'd love to hear people's feedback on Reddit, on the Discord and all those other means of communications with the developers. So yeah, they've just shown a lot of positive things amidst a shitstorm of a lot of shitty survival games. It does seem like they are one of the few survival game developers out there who really seem to know what to do. So that's, 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 a, that's a plus one for me. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and you will see my first impressions video of this game in just a few days. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, have a good day and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.